Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about twins. So we all know what a twin is by definition. Twinning refers to a female carrying two fetuses in a single gestation. So let's write that down. A female carrying two fetuses in a single gestation is called as twinning. Now the types of twinning and this is a classification which I have personally said for myself, it's not found in the textbooks. The, the twinning could actually be physiological. Twinning actually in pregnancies, multiple pregnancies always have a possibility of obstructive complications. However, twins could be pathological or physiological. What I mean by that is physiological, I mean that these twins, once uh, labor has occurred, they can continue their life easily. Pathological means that there is difficulty in the life of one of the two babies. So physiologically we could say that the twins could be monozygotic or identical twins or they could be dizygotic twins, fraternal twins. And pathological we could say to uh, they could be conjoined twins or there could be parasitic twins. So let's start with dizygotic twins. So dizygotic twins occurs when two ova are shed. So this is our, these are our two ova. So in one cycle, if the female releases or if two ova simultaneously shed from the ovary and they are fertilized by two sperms, what would happen? Well, we know that two zygotes will be formed, right? And these two zygotes will then develop into the dizygotic twins. So as the name suggests, the twins are developed from two separate zygotes. Since they are developed from two separate uh, zygotes having no resemblance. They won't have any resemblance to each other. Since they develop from two different zygotes, these twins do not resemble each other. And also the sperm uh, which attaches to them or penetrates the ovum could be an X or Y or it could be XX. So they need not necessarily be of the same uh, sex. So these dizygotic twins, they have independent sex and genetic constitution. That is why they, these twins may not look, may not have any similarity to each other even though they are twins. Such twins are called as fraternal twins. So that's about dizygotic twins. Now let's speak about monozygotic twins. So monozygotic twins, to understand that, let's just review the normal physiology. So we have our sperm which will uh, penetrate our ovum and what do we have? We have our zygote and this zygote undergoes cleavage to form two cells or the two cell stage which will then continue the cleavage will continue and finally we will have the formation of a blastocyst and the blastocyst stage we have an outer trophoblast and an inner cell mass which will then undergo implantation and finally they will develop into a bilaminar germ disc bilaminar germ disc now when does monozygotic twins develop actually monozygotic twins can develop right from the two cell stage itself so, if the two cells, if at the two cell stage, these two cells separate from each other, what happens? And these two cells will separate from each other. Oh, these are our two cells. They will separate from each other and they will develop their own chorion and their own amnion, right? They will develop their own chorion and they will develop their own amnion and they will then form their own placenta and so on. So, such twins are called as monozygotic because they develop from a single zygote. But they have two uh, chorions and two amnion, right? So they are called as monozygotic dichorionic diamniotic twins. These are actually the commonest variety of identical twins. So most of the identical twins are monozygotic dichorionic diamniotic twins, which develop at the uh, two cell stage or which separate each other from the two cell stage. The next division occurs at the level of blastocyst. We said that there is a trophoblast and there is an inner cell mass. This is our inner cell mass. Now here what happens is that instead of one inner cell mass actually divides into two. So instead of one inner cell mass, there will be two inner cell mass, but a single trophoblast, right? So the peculiarity here is that there is two inner cell mass, two inner cell mass, but one trophoblast. Now what is the importance of this? We know that it is the trophoblast which give rise to chorion, right? So these two twins, they will have a single common chorion, but 
the amnion develops later from the inner cell mass so they will have separate amnion but with a common chorion so how will we name these twins we'll name them as first we'll name with their zygote they are monozygotic but and they have a single chorion as we have said so they are mono chorionic how much uh, how many amnion do they have each one has its own amnion so they are diamniotic this is the second type of monozygotic twins there is still another type and that is the division that occurs at the second week we know that the bilaminar germ disk is formed right now what happens is that this is our amnion or the amniotic cavity this amnion actually divides into two and they split at the level of amnion this happens before the formation of primitive streak so now each fetus will have its uh, each uh, fetus uh, they develop from a single zygote they have a common chorion and they also have the same amnion so what are these twins called as they'll be called as monozygotic mono chorionic mono amniotic twins so these are the three possibilities for monozygotic twins so let's label them firstly we have the monozygotic dichorionic diamniotic twins which develop at the two cell stage then we have the monozygotic monochorionic diamniotic twins mono uh, twins which develop at the blastocyst stage and then before the formation of primitive streak we have the monozygotic monochorionic and monoamniotic twins now what is the issue with the last one that is a monozygotic monochorionic monoamniotic if the bilaminar disk fails to separate in these twins if the bilaminar disk fails to separate this will lead to conjoint twins so that is how conjoint twins are formed that is the failure of bilaminar disk to separate between these uh, between these two fetuses will lead to the formation of conjoint twins now depending upon which location the bilaminar disk is not separated conjoint disk could be of four types so firstly they could be the bilaminar disk may be separated in all regions of the body except at the head region so that is one possibility the other possibility is that at the thoracic region at the thoracic region the bilaminar disk may remain attached whereas they get separated at the other regions that is the second possibility the third possibility is that both the head and the thoracic region are fused together there's a fusion at the head and the uh, fusion of the thorax and finally at the sacrococcygeal region so this is the sacrococcygeal region at the sacrococcygeal region the bilaminar disc may fail to separate these are the four types of congenital twins how do we name them the first one is the craniopagus the second one is the thoracopagus the name is self explanatory depending upon the region the third one is the cranio thoracopagus cranio thoracopagus and finally at the sacrococcygeal region we call as the pyopagus so that's about conjoined twins now let's move to the last topic for this video and that is parasitic twins parasitic twins means one twin is rudimentary whereas the other develop so the important point here is one twin is rudimentary whereas the other uh, fetus develops and in very rare cases in extremely rare cases what happens is that one fetus develops inside another fetus and such a condition is called as fif that is fetus in veto this is an extremely rare condition here what happens is that one fetus develops inside another so that's about parasitic twins that's also in general about twins that is there are monozygotic dizygotic twins conjoined and parasitic twins monozygotic dizygotic twins uh, when two ova are shed and penetrated by two sperms we have dizygotic twins who have independent sex and genetic constitution monozygotic again from a single zygote so they would divide at the two stem stage to form monozygotic monochorionic uh, monozygotic dichorionic diamniotic if it occurs at the blastocyst stage we get the monozygotic monochorionic diamniotic twins and if it occurs at the le uh, level of bilaminar germ disk we have the monozygotic monochorionic and monoamniotic twins and if the bilaminar germ disk fails to separate in such twins it may lead to conjoined twin twinning which where the attachment could be at the head or the thorax or both those regions or at the 
sacrum and finally about parasitic twins where one twin is rudimentary so that is for this video and that's about twinning